GenTherm Global Power Technologies. Hi there and welcome to GenTherm Global Power Technologies. I'm Chad and today we're going to be installing a remote start board into a P5100 thermoelectric generator. For this installation you're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver, a small pair of pliers, an 11 32nd inch nut driver, and a small flat blade screwdriver. Okay, to start the installation, you're going to have to open your generator door. And the first thing we're going to do is remove this panel from the electronics. So in order to remove this panel, there's two Phillips head screws, one nylon lock nut, and a little thumb screw. So we take our 11 32nd nut driver, pop off your little nylon nut, and then Phillips head screwdriver. And then this little thumb screw. So now that we're at this point, you want to make sure that your generator is cooled down for at least 15 minutes, ensuring that there's no voltage coming from the power unit. You also want to remove your customer output connection at the 7 and 8 terminals to make sure there's no live battery connection there. And finally, you just want to make sure that one leg of this battery is unplugged, again, just so there's no power to the electronics before you start working. So now that we've got all power removed from the device and this panel removed, we should be able to start installing your VSR wiring harness. In your kit is an included 3 quarter inch 832 screws. These three screws are actually going to go in these holes back here, just like that, and two more times. Alright, now that we've got those three screws in place, the next up is your terminal strip marker. You just want to make sure that the numbers are facing you as we install them on the bottom two screws that are in there. With that in place, we can then install our terminal block. So terminal block, you want the wires facing away from you. And again, the same two screws that you just installed the strip marker on should slide in just like that. So also included in your kit is 832 nuts and a little 832 spring washer. So we're just going to put those on these two screws holding this terminal block in place. So now that you've got your terminal block secured into place, there's one more step to finish off this installation, which is this nice little P-clip that comes in your kit. It's just going to go over top of this VSR wire and onto the third screw. Now that we've got everything secured in and around the terminal block, the next step is to install the other side of the wiring harness into the limiter PCB. So now that we've got the VSR wiring harness fully installed, the next step is to install the remote start panel. To do that, we're going to take the 5 8 screw that is included in the kit with a little external number 8 lock washer, and we're just going to put it in this potentially empty hole in the electronics. It may or may not be empty depending on the vintage of tag you have. With that screw in place, we can then take this foot of the remote start panel, hang it on the screw, and set the panel relatively in position. So also included in the kit is an 832 nut that we'll just loosely put on the screw to hold the panel in place while we work on the other two screws. 
Now for the last four pieces of hardware in the kit, we have two number 832 quarter inch screws and two more external lock washers. Uh, these two screws are actually going to go into this mounting hole here and this mounting hole here into the back pan. We've tightened up all the fasteners, the panel is securely in place. The next thing we'll need to work on is our wiring harnesses. We're going to start with the two position pressure switch harness, um, which actually will replace the pressure switch harness that's currently in the SI module. So the existing pressure switch connection is going to actually move from the SI board down to the remote start panel. You may notice that these wires can be quite tight and it's just as simple as pulling them through the zip ties to give you a little bit more slack. So now that we've moved this pressure switch connection out of the way, you'll notice that this harness actually has the same connector. That will replace the pressure switch on the SI board. And then this two position connector will actually attach to the IG terminal on the remote start board. Next harness to be installed is going to be your four wire power harness. Um, both ends are the same, so it doesn't actually matter which end you plug in where. Uh, this is a little bit awkward to reach, but there's actually a four position terminal at the top of the SI panel. And it just pops in like that. And then the other side will come down to the PW terminal on the remote start panel. The final harness to be installed is the 8-wire control harness. Um, again, just like the power harness, each of these ends is the same, so it doesn't matter which side you start with. Uh, we are going to take this from the SI board, just in the bottom corner here, and the other side goes to the SI terminal on the remote start panel. One critical step you don't want to forget when setting up the remote start panel is you want to make sure these dip switches are set for your tank. So the first thing we're going to look at is the part number for the SI module. Based on that it's going to be 62585 or 64624 and that's going to tell you which way to set your dip switch number 5. On would be for 62585 off would be for 64624. The only other dip switch we need to set in the on or off position is dip switch number one. We want it on for a 24 volt take or off for a 12 volt take. Every other dip switch in the line should be in the off position. So now that you've got your remote start panel installed, all the harnesses installed, we can verify that it's wired correctly just by attaching this battery. and you should see a revision number flash on here and you'll see a heartbeat signal. Now that you've installed your remote start panel and all the necessary wiring, you just want to make sure that all these wires are tucked out of the way and we can reinstall our door panel. And that's all there is to installing your remote start kit into a P5100 thermoelectric generator. All that's left for you to do is reconnect your customer output terminals, apply your gas, and get your tank fired up. GenTherm Global Power Technologies. Power where you need it.